So good morning, active traders, and welcome to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast for today, Saturday, February 18th, 2023. I'm Ken Calhoun, your host, president of the original Day Trading University and Trade Mastery. Good to see everybody here. Hey, thanks, Polly. Appreciate it, man. Hey, thanks, Darren. Appreciate it. Fun to play horn because patterns, right? Patterns. I like riffs on jazz, but that, 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 that. And with our uh, stock charts, we have similar and ETF charts. We have patterns that repeat, and I count on it, right? That's what I do for my trades and for all my members. So let's get underway, shall we? Let's jump into it. The S&P is pulling back off its highs. We've been in a two-week downtrend in the S&P. 4110 has been, or 4100, I should say, has been the kind of key support resistance level right here. Really what you want to do is, The 4100, we're kind of wrapping around it right now. So we're in an in, uncertain zone right now. Okay, 4100 is kind of the line in the sand, kind of like 20 on the VIX, 4100 on the S&P. So what we want to do is go long in instruments that are going up if we get over and stay over the 4100. We did have a little dragonfly doji there on Friday, not quite a hammer. Uh, if we do climb over the 4100, then we get long. Now, if we stay under 4100, we go short slash buy puts slash by inverses like S triple Q. All right. Uh, so we went up, but we're pulling back. So right now we have a modest, a weak bear bias, but the market could easily flip back up. So we're in an uncertainty zone right now. For clarity, what we want to look at, as always, is our volatility volatility index, our CBO VIX. And you can see here we're kind of hovering around 20, as we have been for quite some time. Had a really big update in the VIX on Thursday as the market dropped kind of slowed down a bit yesterday, right? And we had a shooting star in the VIX up here. So again, for candlestick training, go exclusively to my colleague, Steve Nissen at candlecharts.com. He's the one and only guy you should be learning candles from. Um, anyway, my point is, and I've learned a lot from Steve. So anyway, we have a shooting star there. So what that's telling us is we don't want to go short the market. We don't aggressively buy puts or go into our inverses until the VIX gets over 22, right? That's the key resistance area given that shooting star. So we wanted to get over 22 to tell us we've got strong selling pressure in the markets, okay? We're kind of in an uncertainty zone right now near the 20 because it's been chopping around. 18 is kind of a, a key support level too. So it doesn't have to be at the very low, but the aggregate of the data points So 18 to 22 is the current major support resistance level. I wouldn't use 17 just because of one day. The majority of the data points, four data, five data points have supported 18. So I'd use 18. The first line would use 18 as decision support on the VIX. So 18 support, 22 resistance. What that means to you as a trader is you want to aggressively start going long this market only if the VIX gets under 18. As long as it's in this 18 to 22 range, you're not doing yourself any favors by trading aggressively here. Sure, you can throw small darts and we'll look at some good charts. Give me your charts too. Start posting tickers if you would. Uh, if you have uh, tickers you'd like me to pull up, uh, so many, wow, hundreds of you here. Uh, big turnout. Thanks to all of you for being here. Post some tickers, first come, first served. I'll get what I can. We'll look at swing trading charts today. Uh, we didn't have a lot of day trading patterns yesterday to feature, so we want to look at swing trading charts today. The point being, don't go long the market much unless the VIX gets under 18, okay? Don't go long the market much unless the VIX gets under 18. And if the S&P climbs over the 4,100 and goes up for at least three days in a row. Unless you have that, you want to stay clear or mostly all cash. You may nibble here and there, but very small trades, okay? Until the VIX gets under 18 for longs or if the VIX gets over 22, which I think there's a fair to midland chance we will, given the hot CPI numbers and the fact we've got so much you know, problems out there in the world in terms of uh, everything from, uh, you know, increasing, uh, how do I say, consumer goods and inflation, and all that kind of stuff continues to exert pressure on the bottom lines of a lot of companies. And so for that reason, we still want to have a bear thesis. I'm still very bearish this market. Uh, but if the market keeps going up after January's rally, uh, we'll go on. Anyway, let's take a look at some charts here. I'll be more clear in a minute. Now, how many of you were trading cold for my long call? 
I gave that to you guys here over the last two months. I've been calling it long from 1820. I sold 63. I thought that would be the top. I guess I was wrong. The market came back to life on our inverse NAC gas up here at 70. Uh, so I took a stop. I, I had a big win. Uh, I was I held, uh, fortunately, I held my cold from 21 and I sold 63. That was one of my biggest point range winners in my life. Uh, 20, I bought 21, sold 63. That's $40 worth of profit, which is big. I, I made a lot of money. Also, though, I sold 63 and I'm you know proud of that. That's good. But I also went long boil because I thought this going down, it's opposite boil, the natural gas long ETF would go up. And it did for a little bit over 610 was kind of my key level. But then I got stopped out because it dropped. You can see boil is, this is natural gas long. It's going to bounce one of these days, right? Famous last words. But there's a price that proves you wrong. I bought 610. I thought that would be a good bounce. I still think that's a good bounce trigger, by the way. 6.1. Not a trade recommendation, but boil. Because look at all the big ass upside in this thing. From six, it came down from $56 a share. This is natural gas long ETF. And commodity ETFs have big ranges oftentimes. So this one is good for a bounce long. My live room members will be given specific swing trading alerts and entries and exits for that, of course. We nailed cold though yesterday, right? Cold did really good and had a nice uptick. So we'll see. Now a pair trade, a pair trade is where you're trading oppositely correlated ETFs, like the long and the inverse, the bullish and the bearish version of the same exact commodity. Uh, and then you have this for gold and oil and gas and the, and the rest of the commodities. Uh, this, how do you say you should, number one, it's a strategy best used after extended runs. Okay, so right or down or number one. The pair trading, where you're trading one against the other, you, you try and trade both, and then whichever one wins, you scale in, and whichever one goes down, you, you, see, you stop out. That usually works best with extremely oversold slash overbought instruments because they'll often whipsaw back into the ranges or they may continue up. You don't play with choppy charts. You want big, strong charts like this. So. The strategy you note know, would be to go long both of them at new highs. So for example, you know, cold long over 75 or boil long over six or 610 or whatnot. Uh, and it just maybe I come up with an example, say hundred shares of each. And then whichever one keeps going up, you double down every couple of points. And whichever one goes down, you stop out. So that way you're playing, you got both sides covered, both the long and the short of it. And that's called pair trading. And it's kind of a complicated strategy, and I don't have time to cover much more in it today, but it's one of our favorites for swing trading leveraged bull and bear ETFs in my live room because it's very intelligent, and it works so well for us. Right? Uh, so many of my members, hopefully you guys did great with my cold long calls. And you guys here, I gave it to you free, the cold one, uh, the last couple of months. That's a rock star chart. Up in new highs looks good. Another good chart recently is DraftKings. Boom. Now, I had the Chiefs by three. I told you guys, I think I mentioned it here last week. I, I, I correctly, unfortunately, bad. I, I, met, I did not bet that. I don't do sports betting, but I had predicted the Chiefs by three, and I would have made a lot if I had got that because the Eagles were the favorite. Anyway, what about that, that call? Anyway, the, the last call. Anyway, DraftKings way up here at 21. This looks good. I like this profile. With the, and the reason is the volume is large. Whenever you see a high volume gap like DraftKings yesterday, uh, it's a combination of shorts covering and getting squeezed, a short squeeze, plus guys like us are speculative longs expecting it to keep going up, which it is. So DraftKings may be good up at new high. What else do we have? Seabay. That's a great chart. I mentioned it a few weeks ago. One of you guys mentioned this one back a month ago or something. A good call. Uh, it's pulling back here. So... I don't want to trade it yet, but if it takes out new highs, CBA looks good. Here's one GGAL. It's in a consolidation, but it had been so strong lately. If it breaks over the 14 and a half, it'll take a look. Not interested yet. This one, though, is interesting. GNW, I think that's Genworth Financial, up at 6364. Our long trigger would be up over, say, the 66. Again, not a trade recommendation, educational use only, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, that's a, what I call an acceleration ramp. Now, I don't know how many of you have seen me at Money Show live events, but I've been doing them since the year 1990, you know, 2000. Uh, and uh, this is a good example of what I call an acceleration ramp. I've been teaching traders for decades. 
It's simply where on a 90 day chart, you have a steady uptrend that then hockey sticks up sharper. Now you don't want something straight up, but nice 45 degree angle is best. Nice steady uptrend like 25, 30 degrees and a 45 degree angle. That's an acceleration ramp. That's almost always a good shot up a new highs because it has a consistent increase in price for at least a week. Okay, and this one you can see nice. For those of you who trade cheap charts, keep this G and W on the radar. I think this is a winner. This one looks good if it hits the 645, 650 and above. Another good one is Virgin Galactic SPCE. Kind of loopy, but it's got some strength, especially back on Wednesday. We called day trade calls for this one on Wednesday. And uh, for swing trades too, this would be good over resistance. It's making a, what pattern? That's a cut pattern, right? So we have a cut pattern here and we want to look for breakout for long over say 6.7 or above in SPCE. Now, if we look at big cap techs like Meta and Apple, we'll see some interesting patterns. Thanks for the, you guys, give me your tickers, all right? I'm seeing a bunch of them here. If you want me to pull up a chart, type in the ticker right now. I like Boyle a lot better than UNG, yeah. I think I've got most of them covered. All right, let me know. Now let's take a look at that meta chart. Now, what pattern is this? It's the number one most common pattern seen in today's markets. And before we continue on, just a quick reminder that you are all encouraged to do the smart thing and join me as a live trading room member at trademastery.com forward slash live. And you can join me for, uh, we meet five days a week. Uh, we meet in the morning from 8.30 till 11, and then in the afternoon from say 3.30 to 4. And of course, I also show up whenever there's an FOMC or if the market's doing something extreme, I'm always there beyond the regular hours as well. So uh, you get both day and mostly day trading calls, maybe 80% day trading, 20% swing trading. Uh, very well worth your while if you've not yet joined my live room. And before we get back to the charts, one thing that I spent a lot of time on this past several weeks is coming up with a, uh, a, a very special indicator uh, that's, uh, that I show traders in the live room. And it has, it's, a, it's one of the classic crossover indicators on a one minute chart. It actually produces really good uh, entry and exit uh, price points that tested out extremely well this past week. So that's something that's new to the room and I'll be sharing more on that indicator uh, coming up. I usually hate indicators, right? I'm a professional day trader. I trade price action and the tape. Price action's all that matters. And it's still all that matters, but there's an indicator that I hand rolled that I did a lot of work putting into it uh, to test out different parameters. And it does a good job of crossovers on an entry and crossovers on an exit after a run up. So that's another good way to remove ambiguity or uncertainty for entries and exits. In addition to my live squawks, I run the room like a live Wall Street professional squawk box so I'm squawking off alerts, entries ahead of time, uh, exit targets, stop levels, and secondary entries for retries. A very good room. I, you have my word on it. I've been running for 20 odd years now. Thousands of people trained. Uh, you might want to try me at trademastery.com forward slash live. All right, let's take a look back at our charts. And now back to a regularly scheduled presentation. So what's this pattern? Who can name this pattern? It's the most common pattern in today's markets. We're in the, not just the gap, but what feature of this particular price action following the gap, what's this pattern? Let's see, gap fill. Yeah, it is a gap fill. Bull flag, pullback, bull flag, 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 flag. No, MRP, it's a mean reversion pivot, okay? You gapped up and pulled back down to 50% of the range, 50%. Now we look for an uptick here, over 175, right? So that's a well it, it is a it, um, to be fair it is a gap fill and it is a flag pattern uh but what i was hoping you would mention what i want to teach you guys this is also it's also a mean reversion pivot where you have a gap up that fills the gap to around 50 percent and then resumes its uptrend that's also a variant of a, a mean reversion uh pivot pattern so that's what this is a good chart too so that one's, that one's healthy let's see it's 18th oh yeah also just a reminder folks I will be doing my world's top traders slash trading summit event next week. So we will not have one of these broadcasts next Saturday. Instead, we'll have Tom Sosnov and a lot of other colleagues of mine and Larry McMillan 
uh, well, I, I think that's February. I think that's the 25th. Look on the front of the page at tradingsummits.com or type in worldstoptraders.com. That'll forward over tradingsummits.com. But anyway, best I recollect, uh, we will be doing every the last Saturday of each month, this whole year, last Saturday, I'll be doing a multi-speaker event, 30 minutes each, none of these hour-long fall asleep things, 30 minutes each, uh, hit and run with some of the world's top uh, industry experts. And so I'm looking forward to working with my colleagues this coming Saturday. So we will not be doing one of these next Saturday. We will resume the Saturday after. Anyway, so that's the main version of Pivot Pattern. Apple been of interest because it's been on an uptick for ever since early early part of the year. Uh, Apple looks, still looks good to me despite a, uh, what's that, a gravestone doji at the 154 to 156. Obviously, we'd want to go long over the 158. Uh, it's still holding up here. I like Apple's run. It's consolidated the last two weeks, though, so we want to wait and see if it gets over the 158 or above. Now, let's take a look at some of your guys' charts. These are Trader's Choice charts. And if any of you have charts, well, well biggest turnout I've had in like three weeks, so thanks all of you for being here. Um, if you have any charts you'd like me to pull up for swing trading, whether they be ETFs or equities, let me know and I'll pull them up. And if I miss yours, uh, re repost it. Okay, let's see. Full GDX. We're gonna wrap up here in just a minute. So, okay, let's blaze through these. SSTK, first question is, is the range good enough? And the range is good enough. That's a good range, 50 to 80, perfect. So $30 range is profit to be potentially made uh, or money to be lost, uh, as the case may be, but there's good enough range to trade. So that's question number one, uh, at least a 10, 20% range. Uh, and it's right under decade value under the 80, which I like, because I always use decade values as resistance. So that one, personally, I look at, I would trade it if it gets over 82. ACI. Why would anybody trade this? Well, what are you thinking? No, you're fired. That's a horrible chart. Why on earth would anyone trade this chart? Don't get me started. No, not to jump down anyone's neck, but I'm really curious. Why would anyone even consider this? This is an example of the worst possible chart to trade. That's a horrible chart to trade. See, if you want to make money as a trader, you got to trade things that have a trend, like I did with my cold trade, right? See, it's got to go up. See, if it's going sideways, you ain't going to make any money. So. Um, anyway, no to ACI, ACGL. I like, I see where you're going with it. I like the recent run up, but I don't like the range. The range is not good enough. It's only 57 to 68. If I'm spending $70 a share, this thing better have at least, you know, 15, $20 range on the 90 day. So nope, range is not good. Trend is okay, but range isn't. ADI, ditto, range is not enough. I don't, there's not enough money to be made in that. British Petroleum. That was okay. BPO run. Yeah, that'll work. It does have enough range. 32 to 42 almost. It's got a $10 range on a $40 stock. So it's at least 20 per, it should have at least 20% range. Okay, so it's got a 20% range. Uh, it's kind of topping up here near the 4150, but it's it's alive and it's, it looks good. Over over 4150. So BPO play. COTY. Great chart. That's the best chart you guys came up with so far. So thanks. That one's good. I love that chart. I don't like the shooting star, uh, but I like this chart. If it breaks over the shooting star top over 11, 8, 12. So that's the, that gets my vote for the best chart pick of the day. Award goes to whoever mentioned that. So Cody, good chart. How about flex? Consolidating range sucks. That's a terrible chart. You're fired. Google. Wow, what a cluster F that that's a terrible chart. Why on earth would anyone trade this cluster? This is terrible. Why would you Okay? I should sound a bit a skosh more professional. Okay, that one does not pass muster. This one does not have sufficient range. For a $15 stock, it better have at least, you know, four or five dollars range. The range isn't good. I like the recent uptick. I like the fact that the volatility is up. I like the five day up in green. What I don't like is the risk reward. Trading professionally, making money as a trader is a lot more about the math 
and the figuring out of the numbers than it is chart patterns. The chart is good, but the numbers behind it suck. So no, they don't suck, but they're like C minus or D. GDX. No, I don't like things that go down. I like things that go up. Maybe it's opposite. Dust may look a little better later over the 18. All right, so so far you guys only had three charts that are worth trading, and that's that's okay. But I hope you learn the difference. That is a chart that's worth trading. Traders always kind of bitch and moan about I can't be consistent. I keep getting stopped out. Well, it's your choice of instruments that are sparky. It's like uh, I don't know complaining about uh, your employees don't do a good job of work. Well, did you hire the right people? Did you do background checks? Did you uh, hire the right person? Uh, make sure that you're hiring the right charts to do the job for you. It's a lot easier. You want to make it easy to lift charts and make money with them. For the chart to lift up and make money for you, it's got to have some consistent buying you know, pressure in the chart. If it's a choppy chart, you're unlikely to make money as a trader. Let's see what else we got. Okay, let's see. A lot of charts. PCG, G and K. Thanks, guys, for writing in. And again, I don't mean to be a, a hard ass, but I, I, I want you guys, I want you to stop losing money. I want you to start making money. You need to have the right charts, like the right people, the right environment, the right tools for the job, right? If you're going to write, you know, use a nice pen, like a Mont Blanc pen. You could use a cheap pen, but why? right ones that work better are usually a smart play let's see yeah bill's right it says it's like picking women yeah i wasn't going to go there but you're right it's like going out on dates or or swiping on your your what's it called tinder or pantan or whatever uh swipe 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 left left right if you're swiping right too many times that's not good swipe left a hundred times for every one swipe on the right anyway and pick charts that are good as well. Um, again, that's a terrible chart, PCG, TNK. It's okay. It's not bad. It barely passes muster for us, uh, for the range, but it is. I, I like the consistency of the the breakout and the length of the breakout is good. We got two or three weeks of consistent run. So that one over the forty, right? We never buy nine, so I never buy thirty nine fifty or something. But if it gets over the forty. That may be a good play. So yeah, TNK that'll that'll barely pass. BBIO, yeah, another good chart. Yeah, that one's good. I like that one. Range is great, seven to thirteen, almost a doubler, and it's got a good consistent run. That one's actually really good. So BBIO, good call, sir, or, or ma'am, whoever posted that. We're gonna wrap up here in just five minutes. So, and we already said no to bowl. Indy. That's good. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, you guys are starting to come up with some good charts. Thanks. Finally. Uh, so these are good. <laughs> Finally, some good charts. So, so you guys came up with these. I think Cody gets my vote for the best of the bunch. SSTK is okay, but eh, kind of expensive. That one's kind of pop and dropish, so it's not too great. BBIO, that one's really good. I'm narrowing the list even further. TNK looks really good. Indy's good. That'll play six to ten. I like the range. I like the volatility and the volume. That's good. That'll play. And FedEx, let's see. No, that's a terrible chart. Okay, so those are the four that you guys came up with among the 15 or 20. So good charts. So does that make sense? COTY, BBIO, TNK, and INDI. That's part of what it takes to become a successful trader, or at least uh, potentially lose less and make more, is instrument selection. You know, it's like, a, I like a trader to mention, it's like picking women or whatnot. Yeah, you want somebody that's honest and hardworking and doesn't have skeletons in their closet and is uh, mentally stable uh, and is pleasant to get along with and easy on the eyes and all that kind of good stuff, of which being honest and uh, good personality is the most important. Uh, when it comes to stock and ETF selection, same thing. I mean, you could settle for choppy stuff, but why? You, you don't want to do that. As a trader, you really want to narrow your focus for the very best charts that are consistent. They're honest charts, uh, like honest, hardworking chart, right? That's what you want in people, uh, at least I do, and that's what you want in your charts as well to build potentially more consistency in your trade approach. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And that's just what I call developing trader's eyes. 
but you got your eyes and your brain and you're trying to figure out how to make money with them you've got to pick the charts starting out of the gate that have the best odds of success and even then you're going to get stopped out a lot of the times but you at least want to start strong with the best charts in play see matt saying i don't like horizontal breakouts no because trending breakouts are, are stronger like this then like for example here's a trending breakout Another thing you want to look for, just a confirming technical signal, is a larger than average green candle. Uh, and, you know, there's no magic number, but at least one and a half or two times taller than the average candles, so it's kind of rule of thumb, uh, that leads to often a good breakout. So this is a good example of a uptrending breakout candle, strong up. Now, a trader would ask, like, do I not like things that are sideways and then pop up? No, because there's no history of consistent buying. It might that See, that might just be an out order from an outlier order from an institutional trader whose client said buy me a bunch of that stuff so the guy buys a bunch and that leads to a one day long spike and then it craps out and goes right back down uh, so uh, i want something that has a history of going up consistently favorite pattern with volume uh it's always going to be a minor gap continuation a pattern like 45 degree angle breakout previous day or weeks current day a little tiny gap up like half a point maybe up to a point gap that continues up in a 45 degree angle pre-market and then go longer with the 930 open that's a, the number one pattern for uh, for good trades hey thanks Matt. appreciate it hey thanks Bill. okay hey mirror let's see irdm okay irdm do 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 yeah for day trading not for swing trading I like the range, but it's too unpredictable for, again, I don't like things that like it runs up and then it craps out for a month like this did, right? And it runs up again. <laughs> As a pattern trader, you should always use a, look at the previous data set as a template for what happens in the unexplored right side of the chart. So what does this tell us? What happened the last time it ran up this high? What happened the last time? just pull back and chop so does that make it a good play here no it would have been a good day trade yesterday and i didn't i didn't catch this one you know it's not my list there, i don't think um but uh last time it broke out that much it just went sideways and down for a month and a half so we should ex the expectancy is cut and paste that's why i like charts that are that are like this because you cut and paste that it keeps going up cut and paste this on the right side after the big open range breakout it had a lot of chop and drop so I would expect more of same. I'd be surprised to see this get over 67. I'd be willing to bet that this hits 61 before 67. Okay, that's the truth of the situation. So, so I like the volatility for day trading. Sure, if you get more days like this, but pattern-based trading. The data set says after a run of this big, what happens? Drops. The reason why you do that. Again, if you're one of my institutional clients, I've worked with a lot of the Wall Street guys and uh, a lot of the market makers and in Ken my live Vegas seminars over the years in California and Texas and New York when I used to do them. Uh, patterns repeat themselves. And so you should always superimpose the chart. And that's why I don't like choppy charts. Even if they start to break out, it's likely to just be a choppy chart. That's, that's its nature. Kind of like that parable with the a frog that takes a scorpion across the river and the scorpion still stings the frog and the frog says why did you do that it's a, it's a scorpion it's its nature uh, not a happy example but it's it's the truth uh, you look at these things what's its nature and i want the nature of things that continuously go up without surprises without irregular breakouts without irregular chop uh, but with consistent uptrend so that'll do us all right it is the half hour I'm going to take uh, take off and spend some time with my family. I wanted to wish you guys the best. And I do encourage you to give my live room a try, as so many thousands of others have. We have a really big room. And what we don't have is a lot of people chit-chat. I, I personally respond to everybody, but we stay focused on the charts. And you get the best of the breakouts, the gap continuations, really tight stops, and very conservative step-by-step -step methodology that I outline. For, uh, and with live alerts with specific where to go long, like you can see in the uh, deck over here, this is the last note here. This rightmost column of these quote boxes, those are the long signals that I post before the opening bell. So before 9:30, uh, you have the 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 
nuts and bolts, every single thing you need for a trading plan for the day given to you on a silver platter before 930. We don't just jibber jabber about, you know, hey, uh, Marathon's going up or Tesla's running. Maybe it might be a good long here. That's not going to help you become a successful trader. What you need is specific entry triggers, specific stops, specific targets, and specific re-entries or scale-ins, right? And that's what you get in my trading the open live room. Unlike any other room out there in the world where they aren't good enough, frankly, to give you guys alerts because they suck. Uh, I'm really good at it. I'm really good at this. So I can give you alerts that work out often, as any of my members can tell you. You can read the testimonials uh, as well. We do not scalp low float under $10 stocks like some of these moron chat rooms do. Okay, there's some bad people out there. Uh, that, don't trade under $10 stocks unless they have at least 15 or 20,000 shares per minute volume. You don't want to trade low flow stuff because the people that run those rooms intentionally pick things that have low volume that they can manipulate. So they'll buy 3,000, 5,000 shares. And then they tell the room, hey, this stock, and they won't tell them that they just bought it. It's called front running. Uh, this one's going to run to the moon. And if you're mentioning something that only trades like 1,000 shares a minute to a few hundred people, that will artificially spike it. The guy running the room is only beneficiary because he sells it into his victims who buy it and then go out. That should be illegal. Uh, so we don't do that, of course. I never have. And you should avoid any room that trades low float under $10 stocks. Those are poison. Those are for morons. That's evil. You want to trade things like uh, Tesla, Apple, uh, Seabay, DraftKings, Cold, Metastock, uh, things that I cover that are professionally traded by Wall Street's best and the brightest, right? Things that are honest, good, you know, high volume, uh, and still low enough price where you get leverage. Uh, a lot of things I cover, you can see the price. I do cover occasional 5 and $7 things, but most of them maybe $20, $30 a share. $15, $20, $30 share is my, my focus uh, on high volume. So that way you get the best of both worlds. You get high volume mostly gap runners, gap continuations, and the strongest of the charts without the risk of cheap stocks that are front run by bad people out there. So by bad actors. All right. Hey, thanks, Brian. Hey, thanks, Wendy. Appreciate it. Hey, you too. Have a great weekend, everyone. Y'all have been great. Thanks for being here. I hope the show has been entertaining and informative and ultimately profitable for you. That's my, my hope. And uh, so many of you here, I genuinely appreciate it. Three-day weekend. So Unfortunately, Monday's markets close. I'm always sad when the markets uh, close because I love trading. Uh, markets closed on Monday, so we have a three-day weekend. Again, just another last tip here. Treat Tuesday as though it were Monday, e.g. Uh, it's not going to be very volatile unless there's some black swan event or some bad headline out there that causes the market to crash on Tuesday morning. Uh, if it's a standard open, it's likely to be a... Uh, a low volatility open because the reason is a lot of the wall street guys take off the shoulder days on holiday weekends it's another thing that's little known but I've, I've had so many professional traders that come to me for help i'm the guy that gets the call for institutional uh, clients and in the right because i know my stuff uh, a lot of the wall street guys you know took off uh, yesterday and they'll also take off uh, tuesday which is smart you know you work your ass off go up to your place in the hamptons and and have your barbecue with your trophy wife and sports car and all kind of stuff. Anyway, markets likely to be low volatility on Tuesday unless there was some big world global headline. So trade lighter on Tuesday because we're likely to see another inside chop day like we've had the last couple of days. Uh, so Wednesday is likely to be the first big tradable day of next week. So that's just another bonus tip for all of you sticking around. All right, I'm out. You guys take care. Uh, join my room. It's at trademastery.com forward slash live. Uh, money back guarantee on the trial so you can try it if you don't like it uh, ask me for my money back uh, and I, i've had all like four people ask out of hundreds uh, for that so uh, most people stick around for good reason so try it out have a great weekend and i will see you guys hopefully in the live room on tuesday if not i'll see you saturday remember we're doing the uh, the multi-speaker event on the next saturday so trade smart and let's go get them have a fantastic President's Day weekend, and uh, best wishes for success in your trade.